The Sega Saturn might be one of the most misunderstood consoles of all time, often cited as a complete and utter failure that was crushed underneath the mighty PlayStation, the Saturn never truly got its due in the West. In Japan, the console was fairly successful, as the arcade ports to the system were as close to perfect as you could get, given that the console was meant to be a 2D powerhouse and not a 3D one to compete with the PlayStation. Despite this, many 3D titles were developed for the Saturn in an effort to combat Sony, plenty of which never saw the light of day. Sega of America's developmental division had seen many successes during the tenure of the Sega Genesis, but the same couldn't be said of the Sega Saturn. One of the last projects attempted before the majority of development in the West was shuttered was a little game codenamed Spike. Spike, as it turns out, was none other than Star Wars Rebel Strike. Not much is known about Rebel Strike's development. However, as of August 29th, 2019, an anonymous person who just so happened to have the one-level prototype and design documents for Rebel Strike allowed Gaming Alexandria to release everything about Rebel Strike to the public. The man behind Rebel Strike was John Brandstetter, who had produced the Sega 32X port of Star Wars Arcade. The pitch documents were also wrote by Brandstetter and appear to be quite rushed. The timing for Rebel Strike was poor. Due to the aforementioned shifting and eventual shuttering of Sega of America's dev teams and, more importantly, LucasArts' own newfound relationship with Nintendo, as Shadows of the Empire was an upcoming title for the Nintendo 64. The license, as such, would have likely been next to impossible to obtain. What's interesting to note is how few Star Wars elements are even featured in the pitch itself. Those familiar with the land speeder from Return of the Jedi will notice it doesn't really look much like it. Neither do most of the characters, locations, or vehicles shown in the design document. The story for the game seems to take place during Return of the Jedi. Although the document never explicitly states this, it does state that you're on a suicide mission to destroying the Empire's shield generator for the new Death Star, which is the mission of Han, Leia, and Chewbacca at the end of the film. Oddly enough, none of those characters are referred to whatsoever. In fact, only Ewoks are mentioned and how they need to be freed from the Empire's outposts. A lot of this doesn't quite add up, since you're supposed to get two Ewoks from each encampment as they all have power-ups and intelligence information for your mission. Enemies included bike scouts who would survey the area and attempt to find you and any escaped Ewoks, battalion snipers which I think think are supposed to be foot soldiers who attack, but the design document just says groups of soldiers on foot shot out air for no reason. Towers, which are just stationary turrets that would attack when you get close, and probots, which would also attack the player while alerting other enemies of your location. Also of note is the ammo and bike energy, which seems to indicate that the player could run out of fuel and ammo. This assumption comes from the fact that there is also supposed to be a shield power-up, homing missiles, and something simply called engine, which would increase your speed and power of the land speeder. That said, the engine may have worked like an invincibility power-up, but the dock isn't really clear. Finally, you could also collect MAN, which was the document's way of stating you could collect one-ups. The missions per each level appear to be unique, as the first is all about saving Ewoks, level 2 is about defending the villages from Adat walkers. Traps that were featured in Jedi are a prominent part of this stage, noting that players would need to fire at the walkers to get their attention, then get them to trigger a trap which would play a cutscene. The traps included things like tripwires, pits, nets, and logs, essentially in line with the Ewoks attempting to fight the Empire in Return of the Jedi. Level 3 would have players piloting an Adat walker themselves, with the goal being to eliminate 15 others before taking out their headquarters and scoring the plans for the shield generator complex. The document states that players would learn it's too dangerous to continue in the walker, thus jumping back to the land speeder for the rest of the game. Level 4 would put players in a ravine similar to the ending of A New Hope, with the trench and the Death Star dodging rocks and turrets before arriving at level 5 which would have players sneaking into the Empire's shield generator complex and taking it out. Underneath level 5 in giant text is simply the final level, indicating that there may have been six total stages to this game, which, given the era in which it was from, isn't entirely unheard of. The prototype itself, as you've been seeing, doesn't show off too much, given how early it was. 
3D game development was a notorious nightmare on the Sega Saturn, and while Rebel Strike isn't anything groundbreaking, if the limited amount of time the game was given is to be believed, getting anything running at all is nothing short of a miracle. There's a small variety of weapons to use, a decent amount of enemies to fight, at least for a first level, and a very clear goal of blowing up all the encampments marked on the radar. For what it is, and more importantly, what it's running on, Rebel Strike may have been a really neat game. Certainly not one to save the system, but one that may have moved a unit or two nonetheless. The Saturn was, unfortunately, poised for failure in the West, and thus, Rebel Strike didn't stand a chance. By the way, thanks for watching, happy holidays, happy new year, I'm gonna take a few weeks off, but I'll see you all back in January 2020.